Welcome back to Taste Buds, everybody, where the chats are bussin' and the food is probably sus. It's a good one. That was a good one. Good one. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm trying to appeal to a younger audience here. Um, okay, let's try, let's try that again. <laughs> Welcome to Taste Buds, everybody, where the conversation is 100% fire and the food is a wild ride. Welcome to Taste Buds, where the conversation is real and the food is definitely questionable. I'm Chief Master Sergeant Sean Andrews, the Command Chief for the 375th Air Mobility Wing and your host installation here at Scott Air Force Base. Today, I'm joined with uh, someone you've probably all seen around, Airman Grace Pham. How are you today? I'm good, sir. How are you? Awesome. Thanks for uh, taking the opportunity yeah, to come of course. Anytime. break some bread and uh, have some convo with me. Absolutely. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so, like you said, I'm Senior Me Fam. Uh, I'm a mental health technician. I've been here at Scott for about a year and a half. Uh, I grew up in Central Phoenix, but I'm from West Michigan. Uh, How does that work? I moved when I was 16 and then okay. finished off high school, did a little bit of schooling after uh, high school in Michigan. Uh, definitely different climates. Probably would not recommend doing that again. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, it's a little about me, sir. So, mental health technician, and which mm -hmm. squadron are you in? Okay. I'm with the 375th Operational Medical Readiness Squadron. Okay, and you said you've been here for how long? A year and a half. A year and a half. Yes, sir. Do you like it here at Scott so far? I do, I do. Um, aside from the brief tornado warnings and the somewhat cold and not sure if it's going to be a hot or cold weather, it's actually really nice. I really enjoy it. Awesome. Well, I look forward to having some conversations with you. You know, um, when we first started this show, we had this vision to really talk about warrior culture and diving into what it means to have grit and um, and resilience and mental, mental fortitude. So uh, uh, I'm excited to explore that part of your job and see how we can benefit everyone else. One key way to really develop grit is to share an MRE. Yes, sir. Chef, let's do it. Let's do it. Bon appetit. Great, thanks, Chef. Okay. All right, uh, Airman Fam, have you seen the show before? I have briefly, yes, sir. Briefly, mm -hmm. so you watch like two of the reels? More than two. Okay. Like 10, <laughs> ten just about. Right. Uh, awesome. Well, if you watch any uh, length of it, you'll know that we play a game here called Taste, Taste Buds Roulette. Wonderful. Um, so, I'm gonna give you this bottle of hot sauce. Okay. We're gonna set it down, you're gonna spin it just like old high school games and wherever it lands, that's the one we will dine on together. We don't know what these are, complete surprise. Cool. Ready? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think it's facing I think this it's way, that one. I do so think we'll it's take that this one. one. All right, so I'll move that guy out the way and you can tell the world and then show them what we got. Oh, wonderful. We have uh, beef shredded in barbecue sauce. Ah, okay. I don't think it'll be too bad. All right, so uh, beef shredded in barbecue sauce. Now, when's the last time you had an MRE? About a year ago, sir. Yes, sir. A year ago, so that was since you've been here. So you had an MRE on purpose at Scott Air Force Base? Yes, it was a, it was a dare. <laughs> yes, I lost a bet. This is not a dare. Lost the um, Super Bowl. Well, since you're accomplished, I'll let you open that then. Oh, thank you. Um, yep. Yep. This is the part where we're fast forwarding and uh, the, the countdown clock is going. Amber Fam just unpacked this entire thing here. We got a uh, typical MRE flare, but the, uh, the the main pieces are barbecue, and we got a black beans and seasoned sauce. I haven't tried these before. Uh, this has been a hot minute. So, you excited? I am. Are you hungry? I am, yes sir. All right, um, so if you've seen the show, you know that that looks like shredded beef. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, okay, um, sorry, it's got a clinger. Yum, I'm so excited, thank you. Let me, right, yeah, just, uh, uh, anyways, uh, first bite is always like au natural, and then you can add up whatever kind of sauce or uh, things you need to it. Um, let's like hope more? it slaps. Uh, no, I'm good. Oh, thank you. All right, uh, so 
Just get a little bit. Oh, there's corn in there. Cheers. Cheers. Bon appetit. It's actually not bad. Yeah, it's got a tomatoey hint to it. I feel like I'm eating sloppy joes. Um, yep, it's got that kind of sauce. I, I do get a little, little bit of the beef consistency. Mm -hmm. Not bad. All right, I'm gonna I try. I don't have corn. Did you get corn? Um, I hope it's. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what that is. All right. Well, while we continue to dine, it is lunchtime. Um, talk to me a little bit about what your job is as a mental health technician. Yeah, so um, as a mental health technician, we are um, essentially like extensions of the providers. Wow, that looks great, sir. Um, it's very brown today. <laughs> what do you guys do to me? So we're a provider extension. Um, Would you like some beans? Yes, thank you. We just... Um, So as uh, provider extensions, we work directly with either the psychologists or the social workers within the, the clinic, and we can do walk-ins and intakes and um, walk-ins, intakes. We do psych testing every once in a while, um, and then we can also do like the ANAMs for pre-deployment. You said ANAMs? What's that? It's the automated neurological assessment. Yeah, so like that's the baseline test for TBI, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm. And these beans the are... beans are actually not bad. They're pretty good. I guess I just don't like beans. First off, this MRE slaps. It, it's, no? Gosh, I'm trying. I think it's a 7 um, out of 10. On God, this is probably one of the best I've, I've had in a while. Is it? What was the worst one? Oh, the worst one, uh, probably, um, the last one we did was awful. Uh, Which one was that? It tasted Which? like cardboard and package, uh, apparently. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't. I blocked that one from my from my memory. Um, an old mental health trick I learned. Um, but what's the main reason people visit there for? I think um, definitely occupational stressors and being able to manage stress, like time stress. management, work life yeah. balance. Um, I mean, the military is really demanding, yeah. right? It's going to ask a as lot of you as it should be, right? And it's with that is looking at where in a person's life can they um, better organize their time or be able to make time for themselves, like if they have a family, if they're trying to meet all these work demands, where are they finding time to go to the gym or to, some people like to bake, to de-stress, and um, that's definitely been a, a big trend. That is a, you know, from the Air Force leadership on down, mm -hmm. uh, I think it really started with former Chief Master on the Air Force, Bass, mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, we as leaders, all the way down to supervisors, need to take an active role in helping our airmen deal with stress. Yes. Uh, Stress does not have to be solved at the mental health clinic, right? We need to, I mean, your providers provide uh, medication. Yes. Uh, uh, they, they diagnose mental health like, like conditions. Medical and, care. Yes. Like specialty medical. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but stress can be dealt with in so many other ways yes. than clogging up uh, our, our lives. And I'm not saying, suggesting that people should not seek mental health treatment if they're you know feeling down, but when they're Told that, hey, you're stressed out. There's other ways we can get after that. How do you deal with stress? How do you, I deal with stress? You, um, I go to the gym. I yeah. love to go to the gym, um, but not when it's busy. Like three o'clock, not the time to go. No. Absolutely not. But going early in the morning or going at night, uh, I just got a dog who, while he has not only increased my stress level, he also decreased my stress level as well. No cat. Um, yeah, he's really cute. I'd show you a picture. He's a little German Shepherd lab. His name is uh, Denali. Aww. Like the truck. Denali, like the truck. Yeah, it was supposed huh. to be a mountain range, but everything works out. Um, and then on top of that, I um, I actually sing, I write music. Um, so that takes up a lot of my time um, when I'm not like in school or doing work. And then I go out with friends. We like, we just recently went to Eckert's for the first time. Yeah, you've been I, here a year and a half and that's the first time? Yes, sir. Hmm. Yeah. Sounds like you need to touch grass more. I do, I walk outside. It's not like Arizona where it's just dirt and dust and right? tumbleweeds. Uh, so you mentioned singing, uh, you mentioned the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons we had you come on is because people see you everywhere. Uh, I think it's important to n do things outside of just your normal job yes. to, to give your mind an outlet. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, circling back, uh, I, I myself have used mental health several times. Mm -hmm. So I, I dealt with PTSD when I was a young tech sergeant. 
Mm-hmm. And I was I was of that mindset. I had heard the stories, you know, mm-hmm. mental health, if you go to mental health, it'll end your career. Yeah. So I put off uh, getting serious help for years and that it was very dangerous to me. I, I took, I found other habits, none of them were healthy. I became, you know, a, uh, a borderline alcoholic. I gained a whole bunch of weight. Um, my relationships with people I cared about started suffering. But when I finally went to mental health, I realized that that was a, uh, that was a facade that I was putting up. Mm-hmm. Uh, it didn't affect my career. Mm-hmm. Uh, I made master, senior, chief. I became a first sergeant. I'm a command chief. Uh, so point being, uh, when I needed mental health, it was the absolute right thing for me. Now, since then, have I had bad days? Absolutely. Uh, but I've found other ways to deal with stress than just waiting for mental health. Um, what are some ways that you think other airmen can can improve their mental health without having to wait in the waiting room or wait for an appointment? Um, if it's kind of looking on the inside, right? Like everything's personalized. So finding what your like niches. Um, so whether it's going to the gym, some people love to go outside and, and hike and kind of get in, re in touch with nature um, or finding like a group. I think avoiding isolation is really important, yes. especially when you're looking to, to de-stress, right? Whether it's going out with friends to a coffee shop or eating um, MREs with a friend. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, maybe not some MREs, but this one's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but um, I think avoiding isolation, just trying to find your group of people um, is, is important. And there's also other mental health resources as well um, that aren't just the mental health clinic. I don't know. Um, would you like me to talk about a couple yeah. of them? Um, so uh, have you heard of the MFLAX, the Military Family Life Counselors? Yes. So for those of you who don't know, um, MFLAX are located in the Military Family Readiness Center and they do supportive counseling. And so they offer 12 free sessions for, um, at this installation, it's anyone who's able to get onto Sky Air Force Base. I don't know if you knew that. Um, but they can go in, you can call, there's two numbers. I do not have them memorized off the top of my head. Um, but if you look up the MFRC, you'll be able to find them um, and get in touch with them as well. Military One Source is another really good resource. Um, they are a hotline that you call, it's a 1-800 number. Um, mm-hmm. You'll have a super similar conversation that you'd have with a mental health technician. They'll go over, like, when did your symptoms start? What do they look like? What makes it better? What makes it worse? They can find you a provider local to where you live that's associated with Military One Source. Um, One other important thing to note about the MFLAX, mm-hmm. does everything that they talk about in their session no. go into your records? Yes, thank you for reminding me. No, military uh, or the MFLAX are undocumented um, and they're not in your medical record. With Military One Source, um, they are documented, but they're not in your medical record. Um, let's say you'd like to have them and put it in your medical record, you can request them and bring them into patient admin and they'll get them all uploaded for you. So can you talk real briefly about what's that process like? And, and Airman uh, watching us right now mm-hmm. just had uh, the most sus MRE ever and it's doing some weird things to their brain and um, they need help. Yeah. And they call the clinic, they get an appointment, they come, they come see you. What is that, what is that process? Like why are airmen, you know, some airmen are just scared to go in there. Mm-hmm. Talk about the, I walk through the clinic door, then what? And I think that's the, walking in or calling the clinic is definitely the most difficult, at least from patients that I've spoken to. Um, and so let's say <clears throat> Airman Snuffy walks into the mental health clinic um, and says, I wanna make a new patient appointment. Um, they'll fill out this super brief, like one page, kind of demographics, it'll go over like, what's your goal for your visit? Have you ever engaged in any other mental health and then you fill out some screeners in the Privacy Act too, um, because limits of confidentiality is important to us and and making sure that your privacy is important as well. Um, And then you will sit down with a mental health technician um, and we'll re-go over limits of confidentiality with the patient. um, And then we'll talk about um, your symptoms. What brought you in today to the clinic, right? Um, For some people it's he had a really bad MRE and it's doing some funky stuff to his noggin. Uh, but other times, um, some people are having thoughts of wanting to end their life or just not wake up and be here anymore. Um, and that's when we kind of look over, okay, so what can we do for you now, right? Um, and whether that's sending them to a higher level of care um, or getting them followed up with a, with a mental health intake appointment, we kind of work from there to see what that airman best needs. Um, And so it's a very just casual conversation with the individual. Let's lighten the mood a little bit. Have you had an oatmeal cookie 
uh, from an MRE MR before. I have not. I've had the pound cake. So good. right now, somebody in the Uberverse is Googling oatmeal cookie TFF uh, because I'm not sure what that is. But um, I would be glad to... Oh, wow. What just... Here, I'll, I'll even take a little piece. <laughs> uh, good thing this isn't an, an ASMR kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. It's really dry. It's a little dry. Yeah, a little bit. I think it needs milk. Um, but they give you this barbecue sauce. Oh, would you? I think you should put the cheese sauce on yours, sir. Okay, I heard it slaps. No? I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> I don't, uh, I've never put cheese sauce on an oatmeal cookie before, nor, let alone questionable barbecue sauce. All right, let's hope it's, it's not It's the texture muted. of the... Oh, no. <laughs> Cheers. You are the <laughs> worst guest ever. Why? Why would you suggest that? You had me put barbecue sauce on mine. <laughs> you could have said no. You didn't have to, like, re-double dog dare me. <laughs> was it good? No. <laughs> there was nothing good about that. <laughs> Uh, Wonderful. All right. Well, now that uh, now that that happened, um, Grace, thank you so much for being on our show today. Absolutely. I've seen you all around the base, uh, you know, singing the anthem, involved in everything that's going on uh, with with private orgs and, and obviously around the clinic. A very accomplished young lady for just being here a year and a half, um, and I can't wait to see all the amazing things you continue to do around here. So thanks, sir. Thanks for being on the show. And I hope uh, that tickled your taste buds. Um, thanks for being with us today. Uh, we, had, we had fun. And we uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.